Laura tells me you're a poet. What's it like to be a poet? Well, it's a way of living inside your own head, which is where I spend most of my time. But not today. Nice shirt, by the way. Thank you. So I'm going to ask you some basic questions, OK? Sure. Explain to me so that I really understand exactly what the iron lung is for. Well, it keeps me breathing. I can spend a few hours outside of it with my portable respirator, depending on how I feel, but I work and sleep in the iron lung. And how do you feel right now? Out of my league. <laughs> I meant you're breathing. Oh, fine. In fact, better than usual. That's great. Shall we get undressed? Sure. In terms of your career, um, people, and you've talked about this before, I think last time we spoke, it's you're supposed to be the bad guy because the roles that you play to put you in that position, not fully, I mean, I guess they just didn't see me, you, and everyone right. else, yes, or yes. movies like that, but mm -hmm. you playing Teardrop in Winter's Bone, I think at one point you said, I play psychos, nerds, and psycho nerds. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one. That's one edge of the spectrum. Was that it? One end For of certainly. the spectrum. Yes, but that's yes. not all that you play. No, no. Uh, I, I've I've uh, always been interested in trying to have a, a wide range, mainly because I, I felt that it would give me longevity as an mm -hmm. actor. Certainly, I've been really lucky to play a wide range. It just so happens that uh, that uh, Martha Marcy May Marlene and Winter's Bone are the last two things that I guess I've hit with critics and mm -hmm. and, and with audiences and. So people pigeonhole you, but uh, that doesn't bother me. I just feel really fortunate to be able to find uh, a great role and a great script with capable people telling a story. That's, that's hard enough to do. So I don't really judge the characters or judge the, the uh, relative light or darkness of the character or the material. I'm just looking for something really great to do, and, and, and I'm happy when I, when I find it. Mm -hmm. What's the first movie you did that people mm -hmm. would remember seeing you on screen? Maybe from dusk till dawn. Uh, Robert Rodriguez. Oh, you got film. killed bad in that. I sure did. George sure Clooney, did. I think he didn't. He well, set you aflame. Yes, indeed. Quentin uh, uh, shot me, uh, or jo I can't remember. I shot Quentin in the hand, and uh, uh, yeah, mayhem ensued. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was a pretty fun 15 minutes uh, on camera, and uh, Robert always uh, spoke of that as its own kind of little short film, and I, and I was viewed it that way. Uh, maybe that was the first thing that people would remember. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Uh, that was, I don't know when, 1996, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I'd been working for several years previous, but that was maybe the first time I got to have something that jumped off the screen a little bit. When you're auditioning for something, mm -hmm. and they cast you in those two roles, what, why are they seeing any kind of menace in you at all? Oddly, Deborah Granick, who's a fantastic director and writer, uh, told me when she called me up to ask me if I was interested in, in playing in the role of Teardrop in Winter's Bone, said, uh, I like the vulnerability from me and you and everyone we know. And that <laughs> wasn't apparent to me in reading uh, her, the, the role of Teardrop in her script, uh, that, that me and you and everyone we know would be of any use uh, to her or would have any parallel at all or any connection to, to, uh, to what I was about to try to portray. But I was. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy that she saw something, and she and I had a had a, a very good-natured and healthy uh, back and forth uh, th throughout that shoot about uh, how hard we could make Teardrop. I, I was always fighting for. For, for, for going for the extreme with him, uh, it, it, it just, just to serve the story. You know, if, if mm -hmm. the story in that case is a young woman's perilous journey to try to find her father and, and ending up in a kind of hostile territory situation, then, and I was to be her only ally, uh, you don't play the ending as an actor. So if in the end I don't turn out to be a guy who molests her or kills her, I'm going to want the audience to think that the whole way because it's going to make her journey more interesting. Mm -hmm. This is her only ally, a guy who is out of his mind mm -hmm. and, and potentially harmful to her. So, uh, you know, that, that was, uh, that was a, a bit of a tug of war, and, and maybe the Witcher's Bone thing got me the Martha Marcy May Marlene guy, Patrick, mm -hmm. because, uh, because the, although they're, they're, I think, quite different characters, there's, 
there's a level of, uh, of darkness that uh, surrounds the both. Uh, I'm not sure how, how it all how When it all you happened, think of really. Winter's Bone, when you yeah. think of you in Winter's Bone, mm -hmm. not you and Jennifer Lawrence or the other actors, but is there a moment in that movie that just stays in your head for you? Well, certainly uh, Teardrop, uh, you know, has a uh, set to with, uh, with the really wonderful Garrett Dillahunt uh, play, mm -hmm. playing the sheriff. Uh, in a scene in the truck. It's kind of the last thing I think we shot in the movie, really, as the sun was rising. Hurry, hurry. Uh, <laughs> they wanted to get focus, uh, the, the, the director, Michael McDonough, and, and said, look into the side view mirror for us so we can wow. focus on your eyes. And they just liked that shot. And they said, favor that a lot. So I think there's a line that, uh, you know, if, if, in, in a small way is, is, is an iconic uh, piece of that movie, which is... Uh, uh, my uh, looking at the sheriff and, and saying to him, is this going to be our time? And uh, it's just so beautifully shot, and, uh, and, the, and the, the situation is, is, is set up so well, and the movie's so well edited, and it's, it's directed well enough to where that's a piece that jumps to me when, mm -hmm. I, when I watch it. Yeah, it is iconic now, I think, people remembering that to do it. Well, you know, we always end the show musically. You do. We do. Yeah. And if I had a guitar... Do you have a tuba? I have my, I play the tuba, John. All right, you don't play Glock and the spiel tuba. for me would be good. Uh-oh. See? Pete Townsend, mm -hmm. anyone? <laughs> that's, that's definitely who it is. This is un unplanned. Yeah, I could see it on your face. Yeah. Yes, you couldn't do it, but I mean, I couldn't. You sang for me the last time. I did. And this, t yeah, I think you were doing Marcy's song a little bit wow. because we were doing, talking about that movie. Huh. Now, it could be anything that's in your head. Might be an instrumental. I think, look, but I need to hear a little of you. Can I swear? You could swear. I, it's all you want. You have a, you have a delay. Nothing. Just goes out into the ozone. It's out of tune, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a rebel. I mean, I'm trying to be. I used to be. It's hard to be a rebel in a world where everybody's cool. In a world where everybody's on the edge, where the subcultures have been sucked up, at least the fashions, the look. In a world where long-haired yuppies ride Harleys, where preppies sport tattoos, and even preteen kids from Bel Air have been there and done that. Everybody's hip, everybody's hip, everybody's hip. The whole country's copped an attitude from sea to sneering sea, but look out, for you are what you hate. But I'm a rebel. I mean, I'm trying to be. Because I believe that the most daring, outlandish, revolutionary thing you can do in 21st century America is to treat everybody, people you know, people you don't know, with dignity and kindness whenever possible. Hey. something to shoot for. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Beautiful. Hey. Beautiful. Thank played, you. I haven't played in about three months. Doesn't matter. Thanks for that. <laughs> and we got you a guitar that wasn't out of tune. That's beautiful. And we thought it wasn't out of tune, but you me? tuned it, didn't you, Who's while guitar? it was happening. It's a lovely one. <laughs>